Let's look at the rehab of gluteal tendinopathy, a common hip complaint in postmenopausal women. Enroll in our online course now. Link is in the video description. When watching this video, we assume you have watched our synopsis video on gluteal tendinopathy, where I go over the pathology in general. We also would like to stress that these are merely ideas and management will differ from case to case and physiotherapist to physiotherapist. I will elaborate on the advice and exercise part of management. For this case, let's imagine a postmenopausal woman without any structured exercise experience. Let's dive right into it. Researchers assume that advice and education is an important component of gluteal tendinopathy management. Advice can consist of the nature of tendinopathy and possible sitting and standing habits. Grimaldi and Fearon have published a management guide in 2015 showing the different postures that might need to be avoided in the short term. They also add some sleeping positions and their accompanied tendon compression. Make sure that the patient understands that these positions are not inherently dangerous. You can use the Visa G questionnaire to track your rehab outcomes over time and use it to aid in your decision to suggest discharge or referral. When the tendon is irritable, you might not want to start full on with exercises. Easy isometric contractions can be a good place to start if pain allows. Remember that we might not want excessive compression in this early stage, depending on the level of irritability. Exercise progression can be made depending on the 24 hour response. We can progress if pain returns to baseline or lower within 24 hours. Another thing to consider is night pain. We might want to scale back if night pain elevates within these 24 hours, since this is frankly unpleasant and sleep is important for recovery. Isometric exercise options early on are a band around the knees in lying position with a pillow under the affected knee. The patient can resist the band and thus create isometric muscle work. Another option is standing while keeping the pelvis level and placing the unaffected leg to the front. Try to minimize your support on this leg and focus on pelvic position awareness. A third option is spreading the floor with your feet. You will notice that these exercises are pretty simple. Often less is more. Certainly in this case where we are treating a woman without any structured exercise experience. When pain allows, isotonic exercises can be started. Sidestepping is a nice way to exercise the hips. Start in a squatting position and move sideways. Lewis et al. in 2019 investigated the EMG activity of different band placements. Logically, a band around the feet resulted in the highest activation, followed by the ankles and then the knees. Thanks to Moore et al. in 2019, we know open chain hip abduction and single leg stance exercises result in high EMG activation patterns. We can progress with slow step ups as a starter. Further exercises are side step ups or hip hikes. You can see that compressive and tensile forces have gone up. Do note that higher EMG activity does not necessarily mean increased muscle work or even increased effectiveness in rehab. When everything seems under control, we can start some tougher exercises for the tendon. Try to add some weight to previous exercises and incorporate some speed. Our patient is no athlete, so we can keep it pretty simple over here. Try quick step ups, hopping, light jogging on the spot, something like that. That's it for this video. I hope you find this general guide useful. If you did, leave a like and a comment down below and make sure to subscribe to our channel. I'm Max for Physio Tutors and I will see you in another video.